So welcome back to the continuation of our adventures in Forgan's Darkness. We are about to embark on another quest. This time we are undertaking the mission that we obtained in the tavern, in the city. Um, in town really, not city. It's a smallish town outside of the, outside of the area that we are going to play in. <clears throat> and we received a word from the innkeeper that evil is lurking in the in the cave. So we're playing a uh, stump of elemental evil. More about that in just a moment. But before we proceed with the quest, let me introduce um, or talk about our party. There's been some additions. There's been some changes, and we have a new we have a new wizard. More about uh, him in just a moment. <clears throat> uh, all our characters, apart from the wizard, are level two, um, and we changed. A little bit of the equipment here and there, so just so that everything is uh, clear for for further episodes, let me just quickly go through uh, each character. So Geralt, our warrior, level two. Uh, he's carrying the well. He's not carrying. He's wearing the Elizabeth's amulet, dark star that makes him immune to charm and mesmerize. I'm not sure if we're going to need it in in the in the caves, but we still. We still have it, <clears throat> maybe, we don't know. He's also carrying um, shield, as before. I equipped him with uh, heavy armor <clears throat> that gives him plus two to defense. And also he's, uh, he's got his trusted axe slashing one-handed weapon. Yeah, so that's Geralt. He's also uh, carrying two bandages and one holy water that we purchased uh, at the temple, right? <clears throat> then, in the front line, we have uh, Sophie, our level two cleric. Uh, she's also equipped with heavy armor, uh, so her miniature uh, looks, yeah, as if she's uh, if she's uh, carrying what she's got on the on the miniature. So she also has the double-handed black flame of Massimus uh, massive sword. Um, I wish I had found some Warhammer, maybe in this or next adventures, we'll see about that. This is a magnificent weapon that I hope to uh, find very useful in the caves. She's also got the two bandages, um, bless and heal as always, and a holy water flask. Yeah, so that's, that's Sophie. <clears throat> then Lucy, our rogue, she's also level two. Um, she's carrying the lantern for us. Or a torch. <laughs> she will be having this this nice token next to her to indicate that she's uh, she's carrying that. She's equipped with a dagger, so it's a it's a light weapon, minus one slashing weapon. She has a sling. I realized she had a bow in the previous episode, and rogues cannot use bows. Uh, they they sh they can use uh, slings if they want to have a ranged weapon. So she's equipped with a swing this time, and twelve bullets. Each sling attacks with minus one <clears throat> to attack rolls, and it's a crushing, crushing weapon. Two bandages and one uh, holy water flask. And here he comes. Here he is, our new uh, wizard. This is Grishnak, goblin wizard. I don't think I have rules for playing goblins. I, well, I probably do in one of the books that I purchased that, I, that I've printed, but I haven't uh, gone through them yet. I don't want to spoil. Uh, any uh, surprises for myself, so I'll be incorporating them slowly as soon as I finish off the decks and level up. But anyways, he's a goblin, and as you can see, a very grim at that. Yeah, he's carrying his spell book and a cane right there. There's no canes in the light hand weapons um, lists. There's only wizard stuff. So, as a replacement for a wizard stuff, I'm not sure if you can see his cane on the camera, but trust me, he's got his cane, uh, like a walking stick, more, more like that, something like that. But I will, I'll be referring to this as his cane, as his uh, wand, maybe. We'll see about that. And his massive spell book that he's hoping to fill in with a lot of spells. He's hoping for some necromancy spells or life draining spells. He's an evil character. Yeah? He was uh, lurking somewhere in the corner of a, of a tavern in town. And he approached us um, asking if he could join the party because he heard about uh, Rat Shadow, who unfortunately died in, in, in the previous episode on my way out from the castle. So in the end, 
um, we decided to let him join the party, even though a cleric who's uh, Sophie, she's uh, she's lawful. She she's a good character. She she she's not very fond of she's not very fond of Grishnak uh, joining the party. But uh, you know, in the end, there was no other wizard available um, in town. She said, "Yeah, what the hell? She, he might help us uh, go through the dungeon, and maybe he will uh, disappear. Maybe he will you know desert us. He's got some nice skulls on his base." And a skeleton here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So that's Grishnak. Grishnak, he's equipped with uh, with a cane, with his spellbook, and also sling. Uh, same as same as um, our rogue. Okay. I also counted how many minions I killed in in our last episode, and it was five in castle, in the castle. So we need five more <clears throat> for for the for the uh, to take benefits of. Um, uh, of um, the XP roll, right, or a clue, or whatever it is, we'll look it up. He also has two fireballs and one lightning spell ready. I gave him one holy water and two healing potions that we purchased in <coughs> at the alchemist at, in town. Okay, so this is our party. I'll put it to the side. Now I mentioned that we were going to uh, <coughs> to play with uh, to undertake the stamp of elemental evil quest. We received this quest from the innkeeper who informed us about the uh, tentacle worm that uh, that has been kidnapping villagers. And he offered to pay us 100 GP if we get rid of the monster. The way we encounter the, the worm is that the first monster we find in the caves is, is the tentacle worm. All right, we have some debuffs, low ceilings. All characters have minus one on attack rolls. Short characters like dwarves, halflings, goblins, <laughs> gnomes and lutins. And characters with light weapons ignore this penalty. Uh, so the only characters with light weapons are these two in the back. So they do not receive any further penalties. They already have one. So our uh, guys in the front, I need to remember that. I need to remember that they have minus one to attack rolls. And also the corridors in the caves are really narrow. So instead of having two, uh, characters, uh, as in normal corridors, there's going to be a marching order like this, for example, right? So a straight line. So heroes can only move through them one at a time. Yeah. So I just need to make sure that I do not forget about these um, these debuffs, okay, <clears throat> or these special uh, special uh, rules that will apply. Right. Let us let us form uh, the party marching order. Something like this, okay? And we approach the caves from this direction. This indicates where we came in from. So what I did off camera, just to save a little bit more time, but I only did it for the first card, okay? So I drew a random card from the deck <clears throat> and I drew also the outline of the mountain uh, in which the cave is located. So this is the cave that we uh, approach from town. As you can see some boulders lying in front of the uh, entrance to the cave. There is an abandoned campfire. Somebody was camping here before they were attacked by the tentacle worm and, and dragged inside. Okay, and actually when you when you go into the, the cave itself, it starts with a corridor like this. Yeah. Corridor like this, and you can see some body bodies, dead bodies, skeletons, and bones lying about. So maybe these are the adventurers that were camping here. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out. Let's see. Let's see. So this is our first um, card that we um, that we encountered. And let's see. Let's just make sure that it's all shuffled properly, or at least decently. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's see what's inside. It's a corridor. Um, it's combat right from the get-go. And let's see who, who these guys are. Cave lizards. Ooh, okay. Cave lizards. Right. How many? D6. D6 cave lizards. Five. Five cave lizards. Okay. Right. So we have, uh, what, what's the level? Level three vermin cave lizards. Okay. Um, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> I will be using both the... Um, monster cards and and the card that the, the uh, 
monsters coming from from these cards depending on on my mood actually <laughs> so let's let's just go ahead with cave lizards and next time we will be drawing the cards so we have five cave lizards these are just uh, level three vermin so yeah nothing special about them so there's five of them right one two three four five five of them yeah like so that's their card <laughs> if you like <laughs> to indicate that we encountered them in our in our very first corridor okay um is there anything special about them they attack first Okay, reactions one, three, two, three, uh, two to three, three if outnumbered, and four plus they will fight. Okay, they will roll the uh, reactions when I drop them to their fifty uh, to their um, fifty percent, well half of their HP or half of their number. So um, I will look up the uh, lizards uh, lizards uh, miniatures, and I'll be right back. Right, so here we are. Since I haven't got any proper cave lizard minis, I decided to go with uh, cave lizard folk. Um, and I found some miniatures to represent just that. So we have two lizard folk uh, with spears, right? On each side of the party. And three lizard folk casters, I would say. It looks like they have a some sort of a fireball at the ready or flaming ball, whatever. They look like casters. So no armor, just a loin cloth of some sorts. So there you go. We have five of them. This is this is the way we would uh, we would face them. However, I, we mustn't forget about <clears throat> stump of elemental evil debuffs. So first of all we have low ceilings so our guys in the front carrying just uh, hand weapons will receive minus one on attack rolls. But also we have the narrow corridors. Heroes can only move through them one at a time. So the way I understand it is they just are pushed. You know, it's it's just very narrow. So same with uh, same with same with them. So is it like this <laughs> in this narrow corridor? Well, not like this. It's like, I would say, like that. If we, if we draw it, if we put them the way the corridor is laid out, there you go. <laughs> Let's move them, slide them slightly to in this direction so we can, I wish I had some, some dungeon walls of some, or something. We would have put them, you know, here and there to indicate that they are in the corridor. So this is this is what it is. This is how I understand this um, this narrow corridors debuff. I hope I'm doing it right according to the rules, but you know that makes more sense to me. So they went into a narrow corridor. They cannot squeeze through, same as the monsters. So there's five of the, five of them. So they will be fighting each other, like so. Um, it says here that the um, oh what, what what happened? What happened? Hang on. There, I dropped the card on the floor accidentally and I, I didn't notice it. So, oh, what's this? Cave lizards, it says here, attack first. Reactions flee, flee if outnumbered and fight. Okay, so they will attack me. Um, they would have attacked, if it was a room, they would have attacked five times. But, you know, he cannot attack me because he's behind the wall uh, of the corridor, which is very tight. So same as with the fireball, he cannot shoot the fireball or the slings round the corner. Ah, so I could have, see, so yeah, I should have, that's a, that's a good thing for, for these caves because I have, the next time I draw a corridor, when, when we peek into, it, when we peek inside, I need to think of a way to reorganize my marching order because I could have put my wizard here and he could, could, or or the rogue for that matter, and they could use the sling and you know shoot them with pebbles, right? We cannot do it now. She cannot reach, so it's up to our warrior to defeat uh, them. Well, oh, that that'll be interesting, right? So he defends three, three plus uh, two plus three actually, because he has his heavy armor and his shield, so it's six. So nothing happens, right? So that was the attack. 
from the lizard um, spearman guy. And two, we they are level three, and we have plus his level. Yeah, that's his bonus. He has no bonus for for his axe, unless it does something against lizards. Uh, just a quick check on the side. Axe zero. It doesn't say anything here. It's just a slashing damage. So it, if it had it said that they were vulnerable to uh, slashing uh, damage, probably I would have benefited from some extra buffs. But as it stands now, yeah, it's just his level, which is two. So two plus two is four. <clears throat> One of them dies. So what are we going to do with you? He's just splashed against the wall. And, you know, he just walks in like that. They move in. Okay. I'll just put him here, although there's no room <laughs> for bodies in this corridor. It's a narrow corridor after all. <laughs> so this... Uh, Wizard, lizard, lizard, wizard, <laughs> whichever way you want to call them. He just prepares his his nasty spell that he's going to cast on on our uh, warrior. Four plus three is seven. So we defend it against that and we attack him. Two plus two is four. So yet another one dies. Well, okay. The third one moves in and the same procedure takes place. The attack um, plus three is six. So I, I don't think there's they stand any chance against us. Four plus two is six. Um, so two of, well, how am I going to do that? Can I kill the second one? You know, there's a wall. So maybe if he just, you know, swung with his axe and maybe he reached the second one. I should really play it like this according to the rules. So I suppose the other one dies as well. Right now, they are not only outnumbered, but I also reached 50% of their HP as I should have rolled for their reaction. So it's a six, right? So they will fight. He's so upset about his uh, buddies that we we just slaughtered that he rushes in and attacks with a, f uh, well, I defend four against his uh, three attack, plus my three is seven, so they did not stand any chance at all. So we obliterated all five of them in this tiny, narrow corridor. Okay, let's move them to the side. So we just approach the next room or corridor, we'll see what it is. Let's just shuffle the cards. Yeah. Woo. We don't get anything for vermins, you know, it's just a shame it wasn't a minion. Uh, maybe next time we'll draw from the monster deck that we have. Okay, we, we can drop all the cards on the, on the table as well. And let's uh, draw a card. It is, oh, I had another corridor, another narrow corridor. How are we going to position it? Like this, like that, maybe like that. Okay, so let us uh, just quickly draw it. Um, it goes like this, it goes like that. Okay, something of that nature. Let's just quickly make it like a cave. Do it together on camera. I quite enjoy drawing these, although I don't have any special <laughs> artistic inclinations, but I'll make these so that I remember that this is a separate area that we came in. So we need some tiles on the floor to, uh, to make it more like a dungeon cave system. We need some debris here and there. <clears throat> right. Also on the on the mountain. Some cracks in the wall. Like so. Yeah, maybe one here as well and some debris over here. We need some debris here as well. Yeah. And what do we find in this cave? Let's have a look. But before we do that, before we do that, what I want to do, we go into a narrow, narrow corridor. So we'll have our tank in the front, okay? Sophie this time will go to the back 
we will put our wizard just in case we come across quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of monsters. I can shoot with my fireball and destroy them. Um, and I'll put Sophie to the back just in case maybe if we fall into an ambush, she can defend us uh, from the rear. Right? Is this correct? Yeah, it looks correct. Let's see what's inside. Let's see what's inside of that corridor. Yet another combat. <laughs> Look, we drew Cave Lizard, same card, but this time, this, ah, no, no, combat, so I draw another card, I keep forgetting about that, combat, combat, and this time, uh, let's have a look, we have minions, this time I will draw some minions from the monster deck to make it more thematic, okay, and we found some zombies, okay, we found some zombies in here, they are... A highest character level plus two, so they level four, D6, two, two uh, level four zombies. They are undead, immune to sleep and poison. Arrows hit them at minus one. I don't have any arrows. Right, so that's that. Zombies never test morale and reactions always fight to the death. Okay. Right, so we have two zombies approaching from either of the sides uh, <clears throat> of the corridor. One comes from here, well, here, and the other one from this entrance. So this is one of the zombies. He's carrying his own grave or some stump. Well, actually, it's a stump. It's not a grave. So approaches there. And the other one, the other zombie uh, coming from the other direction like this. Okay, there you go. So again, our warrior is the one who's facing uh, <clears throat> who's facing the zombies uh, and the walls are here so we cannot go uh, we cannot do anything else actually we can try and shoot the zombies with the ranged weapons but we will receive some penalties for doing that uh, it's no no it's only arrows it's only arrows we don't have arrows we have we have pebbles in our slings slings have uh, natural minus one anyway so yeah so let's do that, and I mustn't forget about uh, his axe receiving minus one for low ceilings. I might have forgotten that in a previous uh, battle, I can't remember now. If I have, then sorry for that. Okay, let's let's just quickly make their, make their <coughs> monster card, if you like. They are level four, level four zombies. These are minions. And thankfully, there's only two of them. There's no treasure, though. Mm. Okay. But they at least count with the XP for for clues and what have you later on. Yeah? So, level four zombies. Do they attack first? Nope. So, we attack first, right? I wish I had uh, <laughs> Sophie in the front now with her bonus to attacking the undeads. Anyways, let's start with, uh, let's start with Geralt. He has plus uh, two to attack, minus one for being in the narrow, in low ceiling. Oh, look at that. And now, what happens now? If it's a six, do I apply the minus one or not? Hmm. Doesn't say here all characters have minus one on attack rolls, so I suppose I do. That's how I would, um, uh, that's how I would interpret these, and that's how I will go. So, um, so that means that from now on, if I interpret this uh, roll minus one for low ceilings, I cannot have any critical hits in in corridors unless, or is it corridors, or is it everywhere? Short characters like dwarves. Yeah, so it looks like it's it's everywhere. It's not only in corridors, everywhere. So the exploding dice is uh, highly hmm, sought after with the low characters with him. So he can only apply. Well, that's that's actually quite thematic, really. You cannot swing your weapon because it's so so um, the 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 uh, the rooms and corridors are so tiny. Yeah, I suppose that's we that's the way we're going to play it. So it's a five, right? Plus one, plus one for his uh, bone uh, for his level. <coughs> or is it plus two for his level? It's plus two for his level. Yeah, 
So it's plus two. Sorry, sorry for that. I, I forgot that he's level two. So it's seven. So one of the one of the zombies is defeated. So let's say it's this one is defeated. <clears throat> and I thought, yeah, they do not uh, test morale, and they will always fight to the death for the second death. They already undead, aren't they? So he attacks. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? So Geralt, uh, Geralt receives one damage. He failed to protect us. Now, are we going to uh, test our luck with the with the slings? Yeah, why not? Let's have fun. So first, the wizard uses his sling. Two uh, minus one fails. Let's indicate that he used one of the pebbles, All right? And Sophie, uh, well, Lucy, our rogue, she uh, shoots with her sling, minus one is, is two, and she also misses, right? <clears throat> now, back to our, she cannot do anything, back to our uh, warrior girl who attacks and fails miserably, right? Okay, so zombie attacks again, and we defend. Come on! <laughs> is it too dark for you, mate? Is it? Eh? So two wounds on him already, right from the get-go. Yeah, right from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I uh, picked the wrong box. Let me just correct that mistake quickly. Yeah. There we go. I applied wounds to uh, to Sophie instead of uh, Geralt. So now it's correct. Okay, so he attack, we failed. Shall we do the slings again? No, I don't think so. So Geralt tries again. Three, minus one is two, plus two for his, uh, for his level. So he actually manages to destroy um, <clears throat> the zombies, right? <clears throat> then, well, no treasure, unfortunately. Okay, so this goes back to uh the deck okay like so so let, let's just remove that and put it on the side and maybe next time we will in encounter some other monsters that will carry some treasure for us but anyways this is this is the corridor that we cleared okay thankfully these were minions but still no treasure all right so let's see what's ahead of us. Let's remove them from the corridor. Now, which way are we going? Are we going in this direction and maybe up or we're going there? Well, why don't we go in here, in this direction? Yeah, okay, let's have a look. And it's a room, ah, it's a dead end. So we will have to backtrack later on. Well, there's no, not many options for us to uh, to position it in any way. So let's just draw it quickly. So it's like that. Okay, so let's make it more thematic. So it looks like a winding cave like that with a, with a smaller room inside. Let's see what it is. Let's see what we find inside. Maybe we'll, you know, put some torches in there or maybe some, some other thematic some thematic uh, props all right so floor tiling quickly let's just quickly do that so yeah we know where we're going how about yeah we put some torches right there which are lit one here maybe one there yeah so that they show us show us the way they help a lantern <laughs> to show us the way some cracks in the wall as before you know debris here and there i don't know it's, it's an old cave so lots of cracks and things like that maybe yeah to make it more thematic so I got the rooms stand out a little bit more. Yeah, it's not a crack there. But what's inside of this cave, really? I don't know. That's um, probably you know we go deeper into the cave, so we find more 
adventurers who died trying to get out of there, trying to run away from the uh, nasty worm. So we have more bones lying here and there. Yeah, we have some, maybe some spiders lurking in this corner, maybe. That would be fun, actually, if we encountered some spiders <laughs> right after I drew them. So it's a nasty little portion of this cave. It's a dead end. There's some dead bodies right there at the end, you know, and some spiders here and there. Okay, let's, let's add some shading to it, maybe like this. Right, some spiders and everything. Yeah, there you go. And let's see what we find inside. It's probably empty. <laughs> so the room, no, search, search. Let's search it. Combat, yet another combat. Now, okay, let's see what we have. Combat, we have minions. So we draw from the minions uh, back again. Let's hope it's some minions with treasure this time. Come on, treasure. I want some treasure. Yeah, goblins, this time goblins and they have a treasure, yeah, okay, so this time we form a proper marching order and we'll see how many goblins we encounter, wizard will try to stay in the back because he's, he's quite anxious to attack because these are his fellow, fellow men, yeah, he's a goblin and he encountered some goblins, so he's not sure whether to attack them or maybe withdraw from the fight. You know, goblins, hmm, nasty little thing. How many do we have? They are level four and we have five of them. No, we're plus three, eight, eight, six of them, six of them, right? Six level four goblins that we encountered. Okay, oh, this, this pencil is actually not very good. So we have... Uh, Level level four, goblins. Goblins, uh, there is uh, six of them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. The, the last one will be slightly bigger. Okay. Some. Yeah. Some. Yeah. And these are minions. Just to. Keep count. So if we defeat them, we'll have seven, seven minions in total that we defeated. Right. So level four, six goblins. Um, right. Right. So we, here we are, six goblins approaching. So to make things more interesting, one of them is a goblin archer. Of course, he will behave like a normal goblin would, but just for, just for, you know, <laughs> for fun. So. Here is like a mini boss. There's no bosses, of course, but you know, just to make it more interesting and more fun. We have six goblins carrying some nasty swords and, and bows on their back. They are approaching us, rushing us, trying to attack from different angles. Right, six of them. <clears throat> Do they? Let's read some more. Goblins have a one in six chance of gaining surprise. If they act before the party, Roll on their reactions table to determine their action. Okay, let's have a look. And it's a two, right? So, no. Um, they would have fled, they would have uh, asked for a bribe, or they would have fought to the death. Okay, so they do not gain a surprise, so I suppose we attack first. And Grishnak, our goblin wizard, is still contemplating whether to attack them or not at all. Uh, well, let's say for thematic purposes that he rolls one in six chances. One. Hmm. How close is he to his uh, to his to his people? Hmm. No. Let's make it two. So two in six chances that he will withdraw from the fight to make it more thematic. <laughs> I know it's not in the rules, but yeah, I just made the rules. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right, so let's start with the fight. Um, as usual, Geralt rushes uh, to attack and he has plus two to attack. Three plus two is five, minus one uh, for fighting in low ceiling uh, interiors. So it's four. So we managed to kill one of them. Let's say the one in the front was hit with a massive axe 
and he dies. Okay, then Sophie rushes in <clears throat> and she wants to attack this goblin. Let's see how she does. She has uh, plus half her level, which is plus one, minus one for attacking in in, uh, in low ceilings interiors. So no, no buffs and it's a fail. Come on, Sophie. Now, <clears throat> Rogue approaches with her dagger minus one to attacks. Uh, <clears throat> and let's see, she tries to attack this goblin. We do not outnumber anybody, so she cannot benefit from anything. So <clears throat> it's natural minus one. She does not have the uh, double uh, debuff from the low ceilings. So it's it's four. So she actually manages to kill him. This, this uh, goblin dies. Right, and now let's see. Uh, Grishnak is thinking, <laughs> shall I cast my fireball and kill my own people? Or shall I just withdraw? Two in six chances he will withdraw. No, he decides to fight. He does not recognize this tribe and he says, I don't know you. I don't know you, you might as well die and serve my purpose of learning more about necromancy. Oh, quiet, nobody can, nobody can know my secret. So what is it that he can do? Are we going to cast our fireball? Are we going to risk it and cast a fireball or just proceed with a cane? I think it's quite early in the in in the in in the mission in the dungeon. I think I will save my fireball <coughs> and try to smack this goblin with his cane. Uh, his cane being a <coughs> a light weapon <coughs> already has minus one, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So it's just mi minus one to attack roll. So we need <coughs> five, five or higher. No, it's two, so it misses. Right, there's four goblins left, so we have to distribute the damage evenly. So first, our warrior gets attacked. Four plus his three, that's enough to 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 defend. Sophie six, yeah, she she's uh, she's all right. <clears throat> our rogue she adds um, plus plus her level, isn't it? Plus her level to defense. Um, rogue plus level, exactly that. So it's another six. And Grishnak, let's see if these goblins take revenge on him for four. That's not enough. That's not enough. I should. I, I needed five to defend against that damage because they're level four. So Grishnak here, he doesn't have any any uh, anything to uh, to boost his defenses with. So he receives one damage. Ooh. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so it's back to us. It's back to us. Mm -hmm. So it's back to us again. Warrior rushes in. Attacks for plus. So it's three plus three minus one is five. Uh, one of. Uh, no, 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 it's not five. It's three plus two minus one is four. So still enough to to defeat to defeat this goblin. And they will roll on the reactions table. Let's see. And it's a three. They want us to bribe them f five gold pieces per goblin. No chance, guys. I, I ain't bribing you. <clears throat> There's no way I'm doing that. So Sophie now tries again to defeat that goblin as she tried before. Five minus one um, for attacking in low ceilings plus two is enough to kill this goblin. Well done. Now uh, Lucy, our rogue, she can take benefit from backstabbing because we outnumber we outnumber the um, <clears throat> we outnumber the uh, enemies, the minions. Okay, six plus plus another four plus her level if outnumbered plus two, so it's 12 actually. Woo! So she just smacked this goblin at the back, you know, he he falls to the ground and she's because she's so nimble, she just does that, does that flip in the air and stop this guy with a dagger right there. Okay. Let me just think about that. Um, 
six. That's still enough because even if we apply minus one and minus one for these attacks, it is minus two because that's how I understand it. Each attack gets uh, a debuff or buff. So minus one. Ah, see, this is what I, am I doing it right? Because in the previous uh, area, I said that these would be very difficult to score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Withdraw it. See? That's, you know, where all these things come together. So this does not apply. So she rolled a 6. Minus 1 is 5. Plus her level is 7. So she manages to stop this one. Only. Right? So we need to correct that. So 1 dies. Okay? And 1 remains on the field. Grishnak is so upset. He says, hang on. Let me show you how it's done. Right? And he rolls a 4. Minus one for attacking with Kane is three, and it's not enough to attack anybody. Right, the goblin wants to take revenge. Who is he going to attack? He attacks Sophie. So he turns around. You're a nasty healer. We need to die. <laughs> right? So let's see if she defends. Two plus two for her um, for her uh, heavy armor, which is not enough because he's level four, so she needed five. So she receives one damage. There you are. Now, <clears throat> let's try and do some backstabbing. Let's start with uh, Lucy first, and she wants to backstab this goblin, and she fails miserably, right? <laughs> okay. The Grishnak says, now it's my turn now. I want to take revenge on them. So he attacks with, with his cane. <clears throat> Five minus one is four, enough to defeat the last goblin standing. Okay, so the goblins are destroyed. Okay, so we managed to kill the goblin mob and we'll get one treasure. Let's see what it is, actually. Let's see what the treasure is. Where are the other cards? Yeah, so we draw a new one. So the treasure that the goblins were protecting was a magic treasure. I like magic treasure. I like that. So we need to roll on the magic treasure table, which we have uh, here. Yeah, magic treasure. There is no magic treasure that comes with the stamp of elemental evil deck. So we will just use the original, original table. And it rolled off camera. I need to grab a tray. Somebody actually suggested that I should grab a tray because it sometimes looks messy. So sorry for that. I've got two or three lying here somewhere in my games room. I just can't can't find neither of these. Okay, I'll do it off camera and I'll you know correct myself for future episodes. Yeah. Okay. So two on the on the table is ring of teleportation allows user to automatically pass a defense roll by moving that character out of the room. That character may not take part in the current combat, but rejoins the party as soon as the combat is over. After one use, the ring loses its power and becomes a simple golden ring worth 1d6 plus 1 gold pieces. Hmm. That's actually a good, a good thing to have on our wizard, because if he falls down, if he's reduced to, uh, say, 1 or 2 HP, he's very vulnerable to attacks, especially in the beginning. So I, I suppose I'll give it to... I'll give it to our wizard, Ring of Teleportation. I need to find a way, a better way of uh, uh, having the character sheets because they're not good enough. Ring of Teleport. One use remaining. So I'll just do it like this. And it's 1d6 plus 1 after used. Yeah, so we can sell it for that much in town. Lovely job. Fantastic. Fantastic encounter with goblins. And these were the minions, right? Huh? Okay. Let's put these back into their respective deck and we will backtrack now. And we'll see if we get ambushed by some wandering monsters. I really wish I, we do because we can then roll for XP. <coughs> we also need to shuffle these and get rid of the goblin bodies. <laughs> right, 
we're doing quite all right, aren't we, eh? Um, before we proceed though, I think we're going to have a short rest because I want to bandage his, um, his wound, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We will uh, heal. He will actually bandage himself up, use one of his bandages, and I'll put bandaged. Bandaged to indicate that he cannot be bandaged again in this dungeon. And this is a, a mistake I made in our previous run where I bandaged one of our characters twice or even three times, maybe. So sorry for that. But at least, you know, thanks for that. Thanks for pointing that out. <clears throat> You're making my gameplay better. And I understand the rules a lot better. So we rest it. <clears throat> we need to go into the corridor. So we go into the corridor uh, like that, because we, if we're attacked by a wandering monster, we will be attacked from the back. So I won't, or maybe I should be in front. No, Lucy, uh, well, um, Sophie is also very good at defense. So she's, she's actually covering our back. We go into the corridor here and let's roll it. If it's, if it's a one, then we encounter a wandering monster. Now it's cocked, let's try again. <laughs> what is it with me rolling ones today? <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on, what's going on? Right, um, these are the, uh, these are the uh, weird monsters now. We need a wandering monster. <clears throat> so again, we will roll on the on the table for wandering monsters, and we'll see what we what we come up with here. Wandering monsters. There you go. Uh, wandering monsters. So let's let's roll on the table. Hopefully, it's a weird monster. Then we can come across a. Uh, it's it's three minions table, right? <clears throat> we won't roll on minions table, but. We will draw from Minion's uh, monster deck. Shuffle these again, so it's completely random. Let's take that one, yeah. Missed zombies. Ooh. Right, so we have some zombies again. Okay. <clears throat> and they will attack us in, in this narrow corridor from the back. Well, they're quite easy to kill. Come on, no treasure. These are undead minions, so look, it's it's perfect. We were ambushed by missed zombies who are undead, and they will attack Sophie, who's uh, very good at defeating uh, undead um, creatures. Three and six chance of surprise. Well, they will surprise us anyway, because they are a wandering monster. Yeah? <clears throat> Their level is increased by one if fighting in corridors. Come on. <laughs> So it's uh, highest character level plus two, d6 plus four, Whew. okay. It's seven, seven of them. Seven missed zombies uh, that ambushed us in this tiny corridor. But how are we going to, uh, to do it? Um, so it's thematic. So we have one, two spaces. How many spaces did we have? I think we had two spaces. Let me just quickly do it before we make it, uh, call it a day uh, for this episode. That was this one, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's just one square. So I suppose we will just go in like this. One, two, three. <clears throat> we got in there, yeah? And they will attack us from here. And I will build the zombies mob and their uh, ID card, and uh, and then we will kick things off in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's turning out to be quite interesting uh, encounter with uh, quite a lot of undead creatures, apart from the lizards in the beginning. But we encountered zombies, then some goblins. They weren't undead, but you know, then uh, Grishnak, our goblin wizard, had some doubts whether to attack his people or not. In the end, he did not recognize this tribe, <clears throat> so he decided to go for it and fight with the party. Okay, so now we encountered missed zombies, right? Seven of them, and we'll see what happens in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!